a very good morning to all of you i heartily welcome all the participants and a speaker for day 2 uh, session 1 and 2 dr abhishek bell uh, on the theme which is learning through transitions and transformations in the one week international program academia leadership program i heartily welcome all the participants and a speaker for day 2 So before going with the, the brief profile of Dr. Abhi Sheikh Bell. i would also like to focus on the theme of today's session which is on writing uh, research papers for the top reputed journals and writing review papers and as we all know that um, when we talk about research it is very very imperative for all of us not only to find out the problems and the solutions pertaining to it but also to present in in a very formative way and one of the way uh, by which we can present uh, the solution or the uh, solution which we have talked about for the problem is through writing research papers so dr abhishek bell will be throwing light on this particular topic which says writing uh, research papers for top reputed journals and writing review papers um, as far as the profile of dr abhishek bell is concerned he is an uh, adjunct professor at symbiosis center for management and human resource development and a researcher at the indian institute of technology mumbai india he has also served as senior manager of research at center for innovation incubation and entrepreneurship i am ahmedabad his research is in the area of information systems with a focus on gamification stakeholder engagement sustainability and e-commerce startup he is a doctorate holder in the area of information technology and has a vast experience in teaching and research he is an associate editor of two journals international journal of applied management theory and research and international journal of data analytics he also serves as an editorial review board member of 13 journals some of which include the journal of global information management abdc a rank abs2 journal of electronic commerce in organizations abdc b rank journal of global marketing and many more which are listed in abdc and scopus databases he has edited four special issues and is currently editing seven special issues in journal of global information management international journal of manpower young consumers international journal of organizational analysis journal of promotion management all abdc um, index in the area of technology adoption and diffusion with a focus on theory development and theory extension he has published number of papers in top tier journals like international journal of information management journal of operations research journal of business research management decision information system and e business management benchmarking etc he is um, he has also edited two books and is a reviewer to more than 20 journals some of which are um, like international journal of information management journal of business research supply chain management international journal of information management journal of global information management etc and he has also won research grants from nas mei and imral publishers for research pub proposals in the area of information technology and its application in stakeholder engagement so your profile is so vast that uh, it will take around 15 20 minutes for me to go through the entire profile so uh, just just skipping few of the points i heartily welcome you sir and before going ahead i would also like to request dr yogin singh convener of this program to kindly formally welcome dr abhishek bhai
थैंक यू वेरी मच डॉक्टर सपना मातुर मैम वो कन्वेनर ऑफ दिस वन वीक आई ए एल पी इंटरनेशनल अकेडमी प्रोग्राम i think there is some connectivity issue so from uh, the behalf of dr yogen singh i welcome you sir and uh, now i would like to request you to kindly enlighten our participants on the theme which says uh, writing a research paper for top journals and how to go for review papers over to you sir thank you dr mathur uh, and welcome all uh, and thank you for this uh, i mean This invitation is really a, a great platform to talk to young researchers, and I always of the term use the term young because in research nobody is old. I mean, every every time we write a research paper, it is it's a new paper, right? So every time we start a start our research journey, it is it starts from zero, as if we are trying to play a uh, a cricket match or trying to watch a new movie or design new movies. So this session uh, primarily, so we have around two hours with us. Uh, I would like to spend around 50 odd minutes, 55 minutes or so, for the first topic, uh, and similarly 55 odd minutes for the second topic as well. My first topic, uh, fortunately, has lesser slides than the second one. Uh, I have reasons for that uh, because we are trying to target uh, top journals, and uh, while research uh, is a very dry journey at times, uh, the reason when I say dry because at times people believe that it is it is quite monotonous in, in nature. just to br briefly add you add to uh, what dr mathur was mentioning that while we know and uh, we we are in the practice of research and when i say in the practice of research because uh, like like a doctor who practices in his or her clinic we are practicing research in our in our own colleges or big universities so we are practicing research and because we are practicing research we need to know the the right uh, uh, ingredients for writing a research paper so this session is all about that Uh, it is also more likely about how i have spent my uh, my journey in research for the past 10 years or so uh, fortunately this is my second phd and i have finished my second phd at iit bombay so the two phds i have i've i've tried my best to learn and understand research and now practice in research so i've i've just designed a small presentation uh, for the same uh, i don't think that that will that will be a larger thing let me share my screen as well so that uh, I hope this is visible. Yes, sir, it is visible. Perfect. Great. So, uh, so let's begin. So I have around four slides uh, in this, and I I won't say this this is a, a tough thing to do. It's simple four slides. So when I say writing a quality research paper, and I have given a subtitle to that, which is an an inside out story, an inside out story because at the end of the day, whatever you are writing is consumed by two people. Obviously, a The researchers and B before the researchers are actually consuming any of these things, the editor or the reviewer is consuming them. So we need to also look at those uh, counterparts in our research as well, right? So let's let's begin. My my entire presentation is is based out of uh, my experience and my experience largely comes from uh, this is more more of practical experience. This comes from A films and B definitely sports. now this is a very different way of uh, different pedagogy if you want to say uh, as far as writing a research paper is concerned but why i have picked up films and uh, and sports because at the end of the day whatever we are doing is 
should be more ending in nature so whether we watch sports or we watch the film right now because of the covid 19 we are all all glued up to the to the ott channels whether it is amazon prime or netflix or whatever the case now while we are glued up to any of these so called channels or we are wanting to watch your best sport uh, online or i mean in real uh, whenever it is possible you know for a fact that you are glued up to a film or a tv or to a show because of some reason right and every every director oblique a producer oblique uh, somebody who wants to design a film or wants to play a match would want to reach oscars for films and would definitely want to play for olympics i mean olympics is only a symbol of greatness in this case while we talk about the quality part in in our study we rem- we have to remember that uh, if we aim for our aim for oscar if we aim for uh, playing a world cup or a- if aim for winning a world cup or in this case winning a gold medal or any medal in that ma- in that case in a olympic uh, race then we are trying to strive for excellence else it is only a matter of you playing one another player on one another day that's all so th- while that is good but uh, we definitely have to raise our standards so let's talk about uh, how do i do that so what are what what is required and obviously i'll be happy to take take questions from you so i will spend like the next half an hour or so in speaking and definitely then i will take up your questions please feel free to write your questions in the chat window uh, not now but definitely after the next in the next half an hour or so i will definitely look look forward to answer all your questions and queries and this also comes from what i have been doing uh, as as far as my editorial activity as and as an associate editor or as for that matter whatever guest uh, special issues i am editing uh, and i am also welcoming everybody to please submit your papers in go stop journal so the inside out story as i say uh, the first point and the most important point is what do you read and what do you not read now while everybody is locked out at home and uh, your universities obviously colleges have given you all sort of reference materials whether it is scopus database google scholar is always available for you web of science and number of databases but out of those thousands and crores of papers which you are trying to you are trying to read you definitely have to figure out what to read and what not to read and therefore uh, if you look at any sort of a film the first thing what you see in a film or in a cricket match is who is playing or what are my references So remember, whenever you are trying to target a paper in a top journal, and whenever you are reading a paper top journal, and I will define top in uh, or a quality paper in some time. Whenever you are trying to aim high, you have to always refer to a high thing, right? So it's as simple as understanding that if you have Shahrukh Khan in your film, you are there is a lesser chance of you being rejected or you having a flop film. Lesser chance. I'm not saying there is zero chance, but there is a lesser chance for that. But if there is a newcomer coming in, people will have their apprehensions in mind. so in this case my newcomer is probably a predatory journal or a journal which is which is not indexed in a in a top tier uh, category right so please refer to a fact that whenever you are reading a top paper or whenever you are referring to a top paper that paper should be indexed in at least an abdca or an abdcsr okay that's very very important so i hope if not uh, if you have are not aware of abdc uh, category journal abdc stands for australian business dean council and i will share uh, i will show you how to download that list uh, there is also an abs list which also is synonymous to an abdc list but remember that if you are targeting uh, if you are trying to pitch your paper your references your 60 to 70% references should come from an abdc a category or asr category right uh, to the best of my knowledge all the top papers which are published in in asr journals or st fifty journals are usually picking up their papers from this league only so this league is almost defined for them the reason being every editor uh, this is an unsaid rule as an associate editor we have been also told this that we the first thing what you scan is the reference you don't read the paper first you see the reference what are you basing your paper on if your basis if your baseline is correct then probably your product might be correct so a lot of death reactions happen because your references are not right and when i say references i also mean to say that seminal references should be there in your paper for example if you are trying to write a paper in marketing and if you are if you are not referring to the seminal paper in the in the area of marketing in whatever area whether it is promotion management or whether it is branding or whether it is advertising then in that case you are missing out the train i mean people will not give you a ticket to to even go for the review in the process right so that is the first the most important thing so ref, please focus on the references um, i'll also tell you how to look at look at look forward to those references as i proceed 
the second thing is decide what your role is uh, and again the in this case i've written producer director actor script writer etc when i say what your role is that does not mean that what your role is in the paper you see that is that is defined i mean when you write a collaborative paper you know what is who is doing what that is for sure but when i say decide your role uh, i would be happy to uh, to say this that usually journals are looking forward to people who are almost in the same area of research and when i say same area of research that means generally you would be a marketing guy or an is guy or a finance guy or an entrepreneurship guy interdisciplinary research is absolutely welcome there is no problem with that okay but when i say decide your role please stick to what you intend to do if you are generally an empirical researcher stick to empirics if you are a case based uh, researcher stick to case based research i'll tell you the reason why you are saving out a lot of time and energy on that and this again goes without saying at a lot of times uh, you are also being watched or you are also being followed by uh, by the editor in chief for the journal trying to understand that for example dr abhishek dhal is generally a guy who uses empirical research who uses uses primary data or for that matter secondary data in my research now that makes the editor or that makes the the editorial team slightly more confident that okay fine he or she is probably an expert in this area and therefore a paper in the same area is is not booked up so uh, so stick to that area and therefore when i say uh, decide your role a script writer may or may not be an actor right or the vice versa an actor may or may not be a script writer you cannot be a producer of the film also director of the film also actor of the film also script writer also cinematographer also no stick to one area uh, whether you are an operation research guy stick to an operation research technique if you are a uh, empirical guy stick to an empirical guy the uh, empirical uh, research if you are a case based research you should go case based research economic econometric modeling econometric modeling that's okay it's absolutely fine of sticking to that interdisciplinary research again as, as i told you is completely welcome but try not to dilute that okay don't don't be everywhere that's that's my only suggestion to you in this case the third thing is obviously an appealing story and if possible innovative now i have really stressed on the word call if possible innovative at at whatever we are doing Uh, and whatever we believe innovation is in terms of writing a research paper we have actually no clue and we are living in in a world of silos we have literally no clue that who is innovating at what level around the world so we can only be hopeful that you are innovating something in the research paper okay so by the time you are writing a research paper it may happen that the same concept or a pretty close concept is being published somewhere in france or somewhere in australia you never know So what you can what you can control in the process is writing an appealing story. Okay, think about the same example of uh, of Yashraj films being probably number one or probably number two or whatever whatever you want to put them uh, on the cadre. Or think about Indian team or the Australian team being number one or number two. What is important for them is how do they steer the game? In your case, how do you write the same same things which probably people might know or people might have expected in the paper? So if we are trying to think about technology adoption. you can obviously change context from context a to context b depending on the right research method but it is more important that how are you presenting that a, a lot of top papers and i said top papers i am referring to an ft paper in this case or an asa paper in this case are brilliantly written you might you might read the paper and say i this is stupid this is straight forward i mean this is this is something which i already know what is special in that the special in the speciality probably sorry speciality probably in that is the is how are they written that the same thing and i would also urge people to uh, if possible uh, to read papers or read articles from hbr which is harvard business review the reason being is a it's a it's like a magazine so they do not they do not have uh, a research papers like any other journal is the good part the good part about hbr is that it is still an active history journal out of the top 50 journals of the world in the area of management and social sciences Uh, HBR lies there. Uh, similarly, there is one more journal which you should definitely read, which is called Slow Man Slow Management Review. Again, uh, same league of FT Fifty, but both of them are uh, are not journal journals, but they are a lot. They are more inclined towards writing a uh, writing commentaries or writing a lot of uh, journal articles. These journal articles are brilliantly written. So, if you want to pick up the style of writing, try to read those and try to replicate those as much as you can in those. in your repeat that's very very important and again obviously in the appealing story is very very important so how do you appeal the story there are two key ingredients of appealing your story 
in the introduction section itself you should be clearly defining your objectives that is very very clear and second thing and the most important thing in the entire paper how are you planning to tackle these objectives for example if my objective is to understand that will entrepreneurship survive in the in the times of covid 19 a good question to ask very good or should people plan to do uh, or plan to start a new business in the times of covid 19 brilliant question to ask but nobody is interested right now everybody is is too busy in fact every time everybody is too busy to read your entire paper twice or thrice they want quick results so you need to briefly mention in your introduction section that we are trying to address this research issue or the research question by doing a primary survey or using a theoretical background or using a secondary database using a case based analysis using dot 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 so please be very very clear in your introduction section itself okay obviously once i am convinced with your introduction then there is a very high likely chance that i will read your paper and again chance of dissertation rejection is reduced what's your next factor okay uh, what's new and to what degree that's very very important right so obviously now every paper has this uh, every there's a common point which you might have re received over the years is so what now this so what is a very dangerous thing to look at now when i say when i so what the editors are not uh, are not really convinced at times because of your theoretical argument so for example you have used technology adoption model and say okay or theory of trying okay the the reviewers might come back to you or the editor might come back to you and say that okay you have just applied tam model which was available in nigeria probably in an indian setting and you have only picked up database uh, uh, you have only collected data from let's assume delhi or ncr or mumbai what's so special about that now that is not an x factor right what is that thing which will really sell your paper so a lot of times and I, this is a very relevant example which i usually give a lot of times i only go and watch a movie because probably the acting is very nice of an actor right the the star cast might be really pathetic the storyline would be really flop but the actor has done a fab job and therefore i am looking for the movie so what's in there for your paper you, you should be very very clear about your usps of your paper that's very very important so this is a part and b is to what degree that means are you innovating or are you putting the x factor at every stage or at what stage so if your paper is largely a methodological paper then you have to really mention that in the first uh, in the first two sentences or of your introduction that is saying that okay this paper largely is contributing in the area of research design or largely contributing in the area of theory development or largely contributing in the area of practicality of something and so on so what's there for you is very very important the next thing is team set to win matches so who are your co authors and this is a very uh, this is a perennial debate which i usually talk about talk to a lot of people and they believe that sir i want to work with you or uh, i have written a paper do you want to co author with me my answer my honest answer and until date i am practicing this uh, my honest answer is no have i written the paper have i was i involved in the process of conceptualizing the paper if that is not the case uh, i will say a no i'll be i'll tell you reasons why and i'm not preaching this that you should also say a no to this kind of an attitude but going forward the the kind of response what i we have been receiving from uh, from publishers is uh, now they are being very very strict on in understanding that who are your co-authors and what contribution have they made and very soon i mean i'll not put deadlines to this because we are still in talks with the uh, with the with a lot of journals whether it is elsevier or sage or emerald they are they are in talks so uh, and they're trying to understand the the audit process of research that means does have the co-authors co actually contributed or you have just put in name because you want to put in a name right so it is good to boost egos for people that's absolutely fine but trust me on this part uh, don't make this as a habit please pick your co-authors very very wisely if you're working in the area of marketing finance entrepreneurship social sciences economics whatever try to have your people from the same domain because they are probably the experts in your area you may you may uh, you may have a co-author who may do analysis for you that's absolutely fine you may have somebody who may who will definitely do your english proof reading for you that is absolutely fine but don't put people because you have to put people that's very very important so a winning team is important right you cannot have non performing players in a winning team whether it is a cricket match or a football match for that matter in a film 
you may always ask why are these these people in the film when they had no role to play so we are we are people should not be on your papers because they are guest appearances no don't do that okay so stick to your team and that that will actually help you win matches so uh, that is your core team should not change people one or two people here and there are fine but your core team should definitely not change that's uh, that's very very important the next thing uh, which is trailers oblique ads are free to watch please focus on your app side and i think you have got this point uh, very very clear uh, while i'm saying this uh, at any given point in time with whatever journal you are reading irrespective of what whether you have an access to the journal or not you want you cannot read the paper or not uh, or your library has not subscribed to the database or not abstracts are free right so it's the first thing and the most important thing is to focus on the abstract for example a lot of you might have published papers in in journals uh index by or journal published by emerald uh, emerald for example has a very strategic database uh, or a strategic style of putting their abstracts in uh, in order and that's a good sign it's a very good sign what you intend to do is you have to think before you start writing a paper that what will go in my paper in these five sections so what's my originality what is the theoretical contribution what are the results of it and so on and so forth once your paper is ready then write the abstract uh a lot of us come from that background wherein you are you are probably in a fix to write a paper you first submit the abstract and for a conference or whatever is the case and then you start developing the paper uh honestly i have done that mistake very early in my life probably in 2010 or so uh, and i have realized that that's a very tough thing you are trying to do a backward engineering you have created an abstract in your and now you are trying to fit in your paper based on the abstract that's not the case you cannot have a trailer first and then design the movie right that's that's not that's not possible right so please 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 uh, you cannot have the advertisement first and then the product launch the same thing so please do not make that mistake first finish your paper and then write your abstract and please spend a lot of time in writing your abstract okay uh, everybody is reading your abstract so whether somebody is living in nigeria or australia or uk or us they are reading your abstract please 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 focus on the abstract very very clearly and in the same way whatever you have mentioned in your abstract or whether it is uh, not mentioned in your abstract think in the same manner while you write your paper now that is very very important because people usually believe that abstracts are are written in a format which a journal has prescribed which is true okay but while you are writing a paper the the reader is also expecting the same thing what he has seen in the trailer in the movie itself or in this case your paper itself so if you have mentioned that i am looking i have done a primary data collection uh, he or she might be interested to know that how have you done the primary data collection who was the target audience what was the sample size is the sample size adequate or not is the sampling design framework was perfect or not did you check for reliability and validity of the results or not and so on and so forth right If you have mentioned a conclusion, if you have uh, mentioned the uh, key implications of your research, who is who would really read your paper? And this is a debate again. People are 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 the right people reading your paper? We don't know actually. So so let's not think about who is reading my paper and who is not reading my paper. What we should be targeting is at the end of the day, while we are writing a paper and our name is going on the paper, please 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 give your best shot. Okay, don't submit a substandard work. Uh, okay, that's this very very important. the seventh point and the second last point for that matter is obviously who is where do you stream your movie or match and or basically deciding the journal so this is the toughest part for everybody in fact okay your product is ready uh, your uh, your team is ready or whatever is, is the case your movie is ready or you are trying to pick up uh, which journal to, which journal do i want to submit the paper and i will help you with this uh, in this case a uh while you are developing a paper you would really realize that uh, largely your references would be coming from a set of journals for example if it is marketing or if it is branding in marketing there are six seven top journals in the area of marketing which are publishing branding related stuff okay you should really really focus or you should really really start looking for those journals for sure okay that is your first uh, first hand repository where you should definitely try and submit a paper second thing is uh, if you are writing a paper for a, for a journal you should also look for the indices of the journal that means definitely ugc care is one thing which people are now bothered in india but please 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 i am requesting everybody please go beyond ugc care ugc care is a good database but not the best 
because you are you are trying to pitch for a quality research and this quality research is 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 probably being read by people across the world then you cannot rely on a on a journal which is only indexed in ugc gear okay scopus is the bare minimum criteria uh, when i say bare minimum i still don't trust scopus it will have predatory journals also listed in scopus so i usually don't trust the scopus listed journal as well if you ask me i start with an abdc list uh, or an avs list i will show you both the list how to download those lists in some time uh, and definitely refer to those lists a and b is obviously going higher up in the list so abdc start from uh, the lowest cadder is abdc c and abdc b abdc a and abdc a star your ultimate aim for, for that matter everybody's ultimate aim is to hit a paper in abdc a star now it will take time it will definitely take take time you will probably want to hit a lot of c's a lot of b's a lot of a's and then a star it's like trying to play a gully cricket a ranji match then probably uh, a a match against a weak team and definitely then going and playing the world cup so that is how your your journey would be you cannot directly go and play the uh, uh, the world cup i mean you may be definitely lucky for that matter in that case right but generally the growth path or the trajectory of growth should be should be substantial and definitely significant in the process so that's very very important similarly it goes for abs list also so an abs list has uh, the lowest category as abs1 and abs2 then abs3 three star and four four star so abs4 four star are basically the the ft league journals the financial times to speak top to speak journals in the world uh, i will show you that list also in some time it's an excel list you can literally download the list uh, and you can start referring to those things uh, the third thing which people usually ask me a question is uh, uh, does impact factor really matter and my answer no for us right now the impact factor does not matter if it's a good journal if it has it has a good publisher uh, then the journal is good okay so top publishers like emerald sage uh, elsevier uh, tell and francis these are good good journals in general i mean these these publishing houses are actually good publishing houses i don't blame other ones they are not not as good but they do not have uh, the rate of success for those publishers are not as great as what emerald is emerald or, uh, or a page is which basically means that the number of journals which emerald has for example emerald i remember has 318 journals uh, out of which 304 journals are listed in scopus and all of them are probably listed in abdc so that's a good sign it's a very good sign that means they will not be they will not compromise on quality that's a good sign similarly that goes for page and elsevier and so on and so forth that is a very good thing to begin with right and second thing as i was mentioning that you have to also look for your area of research that means if you are publishing in the area of technology then try to publish a paper in a technology related journal again uh, a lot of it should also come from the references uh, from where you have picked your research okay that's very 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 important i'll come to the last point which is also very important i will spend in fact 5 to 7 minutes on this which is who are your umpires and or critics and reading the reviews of the editors and once you have picked up once you have decided on the journal let's assume the journal is journal x journal y journal z is that the right journal for you that's very very important and how do i decide that is a to read the minds of the reviewers and the editors before you go to the minds of the reviewers read the editors and when i say how do i read the editors two ways number one is try to see that what is the editor accepting in the past three years or so so let's let's take a small example let's assume that there is a journal called management decision or let's assume there is a journal called benchmarking the well, benchmarking let's assume has four issues every issue has 10 papers published so in a year it is publishing around 40 papers in the last 3 years 120 papers or so what i intend to do is i will quickly scan through those 120 papers and see that uh, are they publishing an empirical research in the first place or not i'll not read the papers i'll only look at the methodology and say that are they accepting papers which are which are largely empirical in nature if yes then probably there's a chance that this journal has has a mission and vision of publishing a, a review paper or in that case a empirical paper or for that matter a case based paper for example i'll i'll give you an example there is a journal in igi global uh, which is jcit which is journal of cases in in information technology that journal is as a name says largely publishes ca cases in the area of information technology now the moment you try sending an empirical paper to that journal they will give you a death reject saying that it does not fit into my scope because 
they are largely publishing information technology related cases only now if you have you don't have that product with you that's a no no for you then okay uh, similarly for example think about a journal called benchmarking or think, think about a journal called management decision or for that matter amr all these journals have their own pedagogy of publishing the papers when i say they will not publish a a, a case based paper i am i'm not saying they will not publish but the chances of publishing is low again the the question which i will out definitely post to my audience is do you want to take that chance if yes please go ahead there is no problem but if you really want to look at a sure shot result uh, try to look at papers which are published in that journal of that journal if that exists for you brilliant uh, if that is not the case uh, then i really fear that uh, your paper might be death rejected the simple reason it will say that it does not fit into our scope and with the kind of journals and the kind of their functioning with the uh, functioning with the papers they will usually take uh, at times 6 to 8 weeks at times 3 months or 4 months they to just just reject your paper so what is happening in the process is you are losing out of on time of publishing a paper a and b obviously finding the right journal okay uh, we are as editors if you ask me as as as, as a russian editor two journals and a guest editor to a lot of journals i try i try my best to have a shorter turnaround time but not everybody is same in the world so i remember a paper submitting to into information technology and people which is an abdc a category journal they took 12 months exactly 12 months 3 days to be precise to only they reject my paper and say that it does not fit my theme but in the in the process they have wasted my one year okay so now my data collection is is almost two years old and i am not sure whether i whether an a category journal will pick pick that or not so turnaround time for every journal is 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 different sometimes uh, they are small sometimes I mean, sometimes they are short sometimes they are they are, they are genuinely long so therefore choosing the review editors is is very very careful the second thing is choosing the reviewers how do i look at the reviewers whom i don't know who will who will review my papers so again this is an inside out story generally editors try to send papers to do two two kind of reviewers a uh, they will try to find out reviewers from your keywords so if your if your paper has a keyword let's assume technology of your or if your paper has a keyword called human computer interaction then they will try to find out reviewers who are who have published papers or who have shown interest to review a paper in the area of hci okay now knowing the the way journals are are behaving or working in the world generally they are uh, they have set of reviewers which they will repeatedly hire for reviewing your papers okay very rarely you will try to find a, a new reviewer because uh, reaching out to a new reviewer by an editor is really a tough job because sometimes they do not accept the reviewers don't accept the, the request of re reviewing an article and the reason being reviewing an article is a is an unpaid job nobody wants to review an article and trust me uh, everybody should definitely review papers and I, i'll be, i'll come to reasons in a minute but definitely should review papers because that will help you to understand that what is a third party view to a research paper so that's very very important now uh, so because editors have a set of reviewers in their mind and you have seen that similar papers on the theme of technology adoption of that matter branding or gamification or that matter brand equality has been published uh, in the past few uh, in the past years in the same journal you will see that what kind of uh, what kind of papers were published because uh, whenever a paper was published you can also try and get in touch with the uh, with the authors and ask them that what what went wrong in your paper i mean what were the reviews uh, in your paper i usually do this and i'll tell you the reason why i do this uh, this is a very task uh, long uh, time consuming activity i usually write to a, a lot of these uh, uh, authors and say that Uh, yeah, publish a paper in benchmarking. I read your paper. That's a really nice paper. Uh, but can you share the review comments with me? Can you really roughly tell me what, how did the paper got accepted? I mean, what was the 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 success story in the in the process? Once I know that, okay, this is the kind of reviews the uh, this paper this paper received. I'm expecting the same kind of reviews in my paper as well. Okay, uh, I'm not saying there is a sure shot guarantee to this. but there is a very very high likely chance that i might also be questioned on the same way it's like i am trying to understand the pitch of the match okay if i see 20 matches being played played on sirosha court la then i know that how is the pitch behaving the pitch report is very very important okay 
so therefore the umpires or the critics are the the most important people in your entire life okay so that's that's how you will start pitching your papers uh before you pitch your paper i haven't mentioned the last point on this uh, side which is definitely uh, reading your paper in and out uh, inside out sorry please read the paper at least twice send it to somebody who will give friendly feedback to your paper uh, this is the toughest thing right now everybody wants to be a co-author on your paper because they have given you a feedback uh, that's not the case right there are good people around uh, the, try to share your uh, research paper uh, before you submit uh, to a journal and also do a good proofreading subscribe to grammarly if you are you can't uh, afford a english proofreader subscribe to grammarly at least put your grammar in place uh understand the flow of the paper which is very very important because that is a big turn off uh, for a lot of reviewers and uh, editors if the paper is not written correctly irrespective of how brilliant the concept is they will reject your paper okay so as editors as reviewers they are the guardians of uh, the journal and they definitely want the best uh, story line to go obviously that, that the story line should have definitely facts and figures but the story line should also be interesting so please write perfectly and if not possible if possible uh, please get it reviewed by uh, by people who are who are slightly better than uh, you in english or in grammar or in uh, english proofreading or copy editing for that matter and so on and so forth and last but not the least is definitely follow the guidelines of the journal people believe that let me send the paper uh, and once the review comes in then i will change make the changes no that's not the case you never know you will never get the review in the first place keep your paper prim and proper before you actually submit it uh, to a journal and that will really reduce the number of uh, chances of being rejected and uh, that's very very important and last but not the least again this is the last 30 seconds advice uh, please read papers because you are reading papers from top journals which is fp list or abdc list and abs list you will get to see a trend there you will see a trend that generally now people are talking about for example industry 4.0 okay this is a very high trend on people talking about blockchain now Hey, if that matches your area of interest, try to write papers in that area. Now, uh, I will cover this side of the story in my next R presentation also. But as of now, because you are targeting a good paper, uh, something which is already known to people, I, you can only add marginal to that. And now this this marginal increment may not have the X factor which I had mentioned, right? So uh, either pick up an area which is upcoming, or pick up an area which is highly saturated. uh and then try to review that uh, paper which is why the which is why writing a review paper is very very important which i will definitely cover in my next hour or so but at the moment it is around 10:45 and let me uh, pause for a minute and ask your ask and take up your questions so uh, so let me look at uh, what questions are being uh, being posted um dr abhishek i think there is only one uh, question which is posted right now in the chat box and hmm. it says that uh, dr shiva prasad ji would like to know that if in case he send paper for review publisher will take more than 2 years to review the same and in case if we have written the paper on the current issue what is the relevance when it will be considered uh, while the reviewing process so he is asking that i think uh, you have answered the question already in your uh, presentation so if in case you want to throw more light on that so uh yeah so so thank you for the question uh, what i would would like to answer i mean i would just add, like to add add one more point to this uh, that while you know that the pepsi i i will give you one more honest uh, confession from this side a top journal uh, for somebody who is entering or trying to write the first paper for a very top journal maybe an a star journal or an uh, fp level journal or an a category journal you will have at least 6 uh, to 8 months of review time at times a year of review time now these journals know that they are delaying the process but they definitely know for a fact that whatever they are publishing will test will uh, will definitely survive the test of time okay why do theoretical papers are successful in the long run for an example i'm just giving an example for that matter because they know for a fact that the findings would be applicable not for uh, not for people in 2020 but probably in till 2025 and that's the reason why uh, they will be publishing a top paper because they know for a fact that people intend to cite this paper in the long run that's very very important 
So whether the data is getting old or not, uh, because the data was more situational in nature, you need to present your case uh, that way. So before you submit your paper uh, as a last revision to the journal, please uh, you should be very very clear in your fact that have you revised the 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 uh, the references or not? Because when you start, when you have written the paper, that time probably it was six months old or a year old or two years back. From then till now, uh, by the time the paper is being uh, being uh, accepted, a lot of references have been evolved. So please add new references in your uh, in your paper before you finally get your paper being accepted, and that will really make a paper uh, much more applicable in the current uh, scenario. Okay, sir. Uh, the next question is from Prasanna, and uh, question says, which is better? Conceptual or empirical paper, and which is having more weightage? Equal weightage. Trust me on this part. It's uh, you are trying to ask me a question where should I play football or cricket, so which will give me success? Both the games. Okay, or for that matter, kabaddi also. Absolutely equal. It all matters that what uh, what is your personality. So remember my second point: deciding your role. Who are you? Are you a director? Are you good in writing conceptual paper? So for example, think about uh, think about HBR articles in this case. A good FT level journal, you will never find any number game. You will not find structured equation modeling, p test, ANOVA, uh, econometric modeling in any of the HBR articles. It is completely conceptual in nature. But if you think about a journal called Econometrica, completely mathematical. Now both of them are FT level journals, right? It all depends on who you are. If you are a person who actually enjoys writing a conceptual piece, your uh, your target journal should be HBR. The target journal should be Soul Management Review. Academy of Management Review (AMR). But if you are if you are a hardcore uh, empirical guy, uh, and if you think about you are working in the area of information systems, uh, then your target should be ISR, Information uh, Science uh, Research, or MIS quarterly, and so on and so forth. That's completely your choice. Okay. So nobody, I mean, if you ask me, both of them are equally good. An A category paper will remain an A category paper, whether it is conceptual or empirical. Right. Right. The next question uh, is from Rajshri, and uh, she says, "What about beginners? Should they also start with the top journals, or should they go with the local one first?" Okay, now, uh, okay, this is a tough question to answer. Uh, it all depends what your philosophy in life is. And uh, when I say philosophy, uh, when we do our PhD, and my, I hope most of you have done that, and or are in the process of doing that, the The PhD has a has a brilliant word called philosophy, right? The doctorate of philosophy, right? The philosophy of research is is where you want to target. Are you are you somebody who wants to write uh, only one paper in two years? Okay, think about you being uh, being Amir Khan. Absolutely fine. There's no problem being being an Amir Khan. Amir Khan also has his fan following. Or you want to be Paresh Rawal, which is being seen in every other movie, okay? which could be probably a C category movie also, or to an A category movie also. Brilliant. That's completely your choice. Uh, so there is no barrier for an for a novice person or for an entrant to hit an A star or an A category paper. A lot of people who join uh, uh, who join ISC, for example, number one institute in the country, uh, just for an uh, for their background, people who do not know, ISC only allows you to get out of ISC uh, to enroll for a PhD program there. You are only getting out of ISC because you will be publishing only one paper in an FT50 journal. Any other journal for them does not matter. Okay, so they will only hit one paper. Think about IIMs for that matter; they do not have a criteria. Okay, so for somebody who is getting out of an IIM or an IIT, even a three-category paper would be absolutely fine. It completely depends on the philosophy of your institute, philosophy of you yourself. If I would be getting into an uh, getting into a US college or a UK college, for them quality is very important. Quantity is not. For a lot of colleges who are who are Catching up the rat race of NI NIRF or for that matter uh, any other AICT or UGC or whatever quantity matters, uh, but that should not change your philosophy in life. If you are a quality guy, hit an A star, take two years, take two and a half years, three years, because that is that is the kind of rigor it will take. You cannot think of an idea. I mean, one fine day say, okay, this is the idea. Let me collect data. Let me write a paper and submit to an A category journal. You will be really lucky if you are getting a paper accepted there. But a good paper will actually take six to eight months of conceptualization, reworking, validating your uh, your idea from the best people, best reviewers of all time, uh, uh, who will just give you friendly advice. So a lot of times people write to me saying that this is my idea, 
and i actually grilled them on their idea itself and they said that, that do you really think it is that simple an idea and i know no, the idea is good i just want to understand that are you clear with the idea what you want to do or not if you are not clear with the idea if you you yourself are not convinced with your idea i mean why will the reviewer be convinced so that's very very important so pick your battle right sir uh the next question is uh, from manju she and she says for an advice researcher who d- who doesn't know the reviewers how do we select the reviewers since uh, she has seen some journals which they do give that option uh trust me that's a hope okay uh, you put any reviewers name uh, they uh, they are only trying to down databases honestly if you ask me so indesign does that rotten emerald does that igi does that uh, sage also does that at times what they're basically doing is they they themselves don't know the reviewers so what they are doing from you is uh, they're asking four names to from international to from indian uh, origin or your country's origin for that matter and they will add to the databases very 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 rarely will they send your paper to those reviewers okay so you can ideally if you want to put the names try to put names of people who are uh, whom your who whom you have referred to in your paper for example if you if i have referred to uh ankappa gunasekhar for example or uh, for that matter shivam gupta uh, as so that is his paper was the seminal paper whom whom I, the paper which i have read uh, in developing my own paper so my idea was conceptualized because of shivam gupta's paper or sujit bagh's paper or pankaj gupta's paper then i will definitely put him or her as a reviewer because then there if even though the paper goes to him or her it is a very uh, less likely chance then he or she should be interested to read my paper i have in a way extended his or her work so that is uh, that is very very important right correct um the next question says um, top journals uh, do top journals prefer articles that are an outcome of exploratory or descriptive research uh top journals usually don't don't uh, don't look forward to only descriptive based uh, research or exploratory based exploratory research is also a nice way to actually so uh, i'll tell you so when i talk about exploratory research people believe that i have uh, so think about it as I'll, i'll give a very small example in in times of covid 19 whatever you are doing right now is a it's an exploratory research right okay there will be rarely uh, chances of actually collecting database from covid 19 patients you cannot go to a hospital and say okay let me ask uh, patients uh, how do you feel in a hospital or what is your take on covid 19 and so on and so forth Now, whatever you will be writing is slightly, largely exploratory in nature. You are trying to still explore possibilities for business, for example. In in such situations, exploratory papers are most welcome. They are completely welcome. So, yeah, whenever there is a con- whenever there is a new concept being launched, an exploratory paper, even though that is backed by some descriptive research, is absolutely welcome. But if you look forward to a uh, established concept or some something which has been there for quite some time. Journals will not be entertaining a exploratory or a descriptive based paper. Top journals, I mean, I mean, then other journals who might be accepting those papers with exploratory and descriptive also. But top journals usually don't uh, uh, trust that. Right, sir. Ah, uh, sir, there is one more question uh, which is uh, from my side only, and please go ahead. It's not uh, actually related with the entire lot which you have described. uh the problem comes while getting uh, those abdc rank papers uh whether they are a star or a category we uh, like uh, many of us have faced the difficulty of getting those paper or downloading those paper as those databases are either log or they have some privacy issues or the databases are open to the institutes it's, itself so for uh, for a general faculty or for a researcher these databases are not open so if people are not able to read quality papers how they can develop and how they can conceptualize and they can uh, like enlighten the areas which are not taken care of so this is a general problem even i have also faced that i am not able to get those papers from the uh, reputed databases and for 
getting or fetching those papers i have to seek help or i have to go to premier institutes and then from there i have to download those papers so entire databases we don't have and there is a possible paucity of those papers or those uh, articles of repute which we should have gone through before conceptualizing right so what i would suggest uh, so obviously uh, dr mathu what you have said is absolutely right uh, india largely is uh, facing this problem of uh, not getting an access to a lot of databases two things i can only give suggestions a uh, try to pick up a co-author who is working either or, either in these kind of institutes uh, or somebody who is doing a, even a phd in that institute now uh, him or her is uh, is somebody who will actually give you papers uh, to read okay you can make him or her a co-author if you really believe he or she has contributed uh, a and b while while i'm suggesting is because generally people who are play who are working in this premier institute and who definitely match your area of uh, of work will also give you probably better insight uh, i'm not saying probably i'm only saying using probably because i again don't know these people okay so try to uh, uh, seek help from these people uh, right now with covid 19 in picture you can't travel i can understand that part but obviously situations will be fine in the long run you should definitely subscribe to a lot of uh, lot of uh, the, the library portals of these uh, institute and every every city has at least one of the one or the two premier institutes if not is at least i am right of that matter nit is usually these nits iims iits have the entire database go to the library spend time okay or pick up a co-author uh, who will actually help you with the papers help you with the data collection because apart from only the papers uh, trust me dr mathu you will also need help on in probably data collection in the long run because not every institute has but these top the institutes like iits iims and iits usually they have funds or at least some premier institutes also have funds they give funds to the to the faculty members now if you collaborate with them your data collection also becomes slightly more easier faster much more reliable in the process so that is important uh, lastly which i would also want to add if you really want if you really think that that is also getting i mean that is also not possible uh, refer to research gate or write to these authors i have written to a to at least a thousand authors trying to fetch fetch, fetch papers and i was beginning my research uh, and over the years uh, what i also do is whenever i finish my research i send my research to them as an email in an email saying that thank you for your contribution i have mentioned your name in the acknowledgement section because you have helped me with the papers or whatever uh, that gives me a good uh, bonding with these people also because at the end of the day uh, we all are doing research so it is it is peer to peer learning thanks a lot sir but uh, as you have already uh, told in the presentation itself there is uh, there is a likelihood that uh, those co-authors deny also so yeah there there is a very Yeah, yeah, there's a very high likely chance. <laughs> so that that becomes a problem, especially for people who are um, in tier two cities, where either these premier institutes are not there, or uh, the second choice is also not with them. So that is, I think, it is one of the reason that, especially our country, we are lacking behind, especially in the front of research, because if we are not reading, we are not. able to conceptualize well then how we can draw out conclusions pertaining to any problem so i think this is the gray area and it should be uh, taken well out yeah, i can completely understand that dr mathur and uh, this is for the entire audience who are listening uh, even uh, if you ask me i myself have faced similar issues when i was uh, when i started my research in 2010 uh, i mean with symbiosis also it was earlier as issue I mean, till now they have obviously improved over the last decade or so. But uh, when I stepped into IIT, that that is, there is there was similar problem at IIT is also. I mean, a lot of databases are not being subscribed at IIT. So what we used to do was we used to write emails uh, to other IITs or to other faculty. And a lot of my research, a lot of my co-authors come from different institutes. And the reason being because they help me with the, either data collection or conceptualization or at times at times research papers. I mean, I do that uh, till date. so but i again my core team is is remains the same so once you have found out somebody uh, who is helping you with uh, with x amount of work or y amount of work stick to that person that is the uh, so longevity longevity is important in the process uh, people uh, try to have shorter goals and be shorter teams 
ki okay i will team up with you for this paper and i will team up with somebody else for the next paper you should not do that uh, i mean that's completely your choice but not advisable again thanks a lot uh, the another question it, say, uh, it says what is the difference between abstract and introduction and one more thing preface and summary of report in a thesis okay uh so abstract and introduction so obviously introduction uh, abstract is something which you write uh, uh, which is basically like an overview so as i was mentioning abstract are are synonymous to trailers it will show you almost everything of the movie i mean obviously not reveal everything but yeah they will give you who the actors are what the story line is uh, is there a suspense is there a suspense movie is it a comedy movie uh, two minutes of i mean 30 seconds of songs of the movie and so on and so forth so abstract are basically like a blueprint of the entire uh, of the entire paper so it starts with uh, what is the motivation of research it, uh, it talks about the the research question you are trying to address uh, how do you want to address so what's the research design what are the key results you have found out what implication does it have what originality does it contain and so on and so forth so usually abstracts are written between 250 to 300 words sometimes 400 words depending on the journal uh, when, it, when it comes to introduction it should it should technically have four or five key ingredients number one ingredient is to understand is to is to uh, briefly mention the operational definition of your topic so for example if i am trying to understand technology adoption what is the operational definition of technology adoption what do you mean by technology in your case and what is adoption to you so adoption is a very broad term okay but what so how do you put boundaries to adoption that's very important in the introduction section second thing is your research question your research question should be completely grounded okay either grounded in so in literature uh, when i say literature so literature comes from three different aspects a it should be either coming from a theoretical lens uh, which is very very important or it should be largely practical in nature for example the current covid 19 case uh, and c uh, is experience okay so a lot of times not everything what you experience is documented okay so uh, experience is something which people usually don't document at times but everybody would have experienced it so it will it will also is also appreciated that you pick up one of the three things to to come up to your research question very clearly the third thing which you should write in your introduction is that uh, what is the novelty of this of this research question why it is important for me to read this and and read more about this for that matter uh, that's important and the fourth important thing is how do you plan to address it as i was mentioning please write it very clearly that this paper will will collect i mean uh, we intend to collect uh, primary data collection uh, to answer this research question we will hypothesize this we will create a, a theoretical model out of this we will write an econometric equation out of this we will do a case based reasoning out of this we will uh, apply an ahc method ism method topsis method dot 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 how will you answer this question and last but not the least please briefly mention the the structure of your entire paper section 1 will be introduction section 2 will be literature review three will be this four will be this five will be this so these four five uh, topics usually make up your introduction section the introduction section usually ranges between uh, two to four pages depending on uh, depending on your paper a lot of journals also appreciate uh, introduction section being merged with the literature review section because instead of writing a literature review they will ask you to write something called the theoretical framework or the theoretical underpinning that's also welcome it completely depends on the journal which you are trying to pitch but uh, our introduction literature review research design kind of a structure is also welcome the second question was uh, what is the difference between synopsis and summary uh, uh, more or less uh, again this is very subjective to the university uh, when i i have read a lot of pieces uh, over the years synopsis is largely uh, so so first i'll come to the summary part summary is more likely like an abstract for you okay so whenever you will uh, it's like it's like one one page of the entire uh, uh, of the entire uh, uh, study what you have done and you're trying to summarize that that's that's more like a summary when you talk about synopsis it's usually a detailed version of that it's slightly like an extended abstract in the process and a lot of universities prefer to put uh, Uh, synopsis before the thesis uh, to the reviewers because then while if they have read the entire synopsis they might be interested in reading the entire uh, thesis also so uh, synopsis is usually written between 5 to 7 pages or at times 10 pages or 12 pages also depending on your university guidelines 
but summary of the entire study is largely given in in a page or two maximum a page or two not beyond that okay sir uh, the next question it uh, says whether researchers on local area whether researches on local area will be accepted by the top journals or not what what, what do you mean by local area i mean i i assume local area means if you are you are coming from us uh, from madhya pradesh or from bihar or from assam is that a local area or you are coming from a rural area is that a local area uh, trust me uh, that there is no reason that they will reject you your affiliation does not matter to the uh, to the to the journal at all okay so this is a, it's the complete myth uh, that you are coming from an institute which is not recognized by aict ugc or dot 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 trust me the world does not even care which institute are you coming from if your idea is they will publish your papers i will show i can i have multiple examples when i can literally show you uh, papers which are published in top journals which people believe are uh, are written by my average thing one of the recent papers which we published in jvr i mean this is a story which i would like to brief to talk about in 30 seconds uh, people were uh, they, they they came back to me after i published my paper and they said that why did you team up with people from amity like so my co-authors are co-authors whether they come from amity or iit or michigan state university or harvard that does not really matter if the idea is interesting i will publish a paper and we published a paper i am a third author in the paper it is published in journal of business research which is impact factor 6 point something abdc a category journal so affiliation literally don't matter okay so i have published papers with people from iit also with people from uh, south african universities also that does not really matter and i have also got, got papers uh, which are rejected from uh, from journals which are having co-authors from uh, uk and us also it really does not matter okay sir and uh, as uh, we'll move ahead with the next part before that i'll just take one of my query as well again yes, uh, my query is that can you just give me some uh, insights on how to write a paper which is basically based upon a bibliometric analysis or something related with that like okay so bibliometric analysis i mean when we come to the review section there are how to write a review paper bibliometric reviews are one of the kinds of review paper slightly more prevalent these days uh, i mean people i mean a lot of journals are accepting those kind of uh, review papers also but dr sabda can i take this query in the next session because i am covering that definitely. in my next session definitely definitely okay any more questions from this session i will be then moving on to the next session no i think not now and if in case there would be we'll take either in the end or i'll post you offline so i'll take your inputs in that great perfect so let me jump to my next uh, session which is which is writing a review paper the untold story again i mentioned the untold story because uh, a lot of people uh, usually believe that review papers are toughest thing to write and trust me that that's true okay uh when i say review papers i from 11 to 10 i have around 50 minutes or so to talk about this and then after 12 o'clock we can take some queries uh definitely so uh, writing review papers uh, so when i say review the first thing what people comes what i come this comes to my mind is uh, is thinking about a movie review again right so when when somebody has actually uh, uh So, so for example, if you watch a movie, you come out of the theater and you are trying to discuss that movie with your friends, saying that okay, I think the acting was good, the songs were nicer, the cinematography was good, and so on and so forth. Again, at the point at, after a point in time, your discussion will be slightly more repetitive in nature because you yourself only uh, critically evaluate three or four aspects of the movie. The three four aspects, the most common are are how was the story, how was the acting, were the songs nicer. uh was it a, a a generally good movie it was a fun filled movie or the movie which i like or not and so on and so forth but beyond that you usually do not write uh, you you don't discuss anything about the movie for example how was the set the set of the movie or discuss how the costumes were or discuss for that matter uh, uh, who were the side actors in the movie and so on and so forth so this is something which is the trigger point for me to start the session called the untold story when you will write a review paper please understand that you need to pick up uh, that section in and out okay so the first thing which i would uh, be talking about uh, in this case is the story of blind man and an elephant 
most of you would have heard the story uh, because uh, you can see the picture on the right which says that because you are only looking at one section of the story you believe that an elephant looks like a fan or a snake or a tree or a rope or a wall now that's good as you are because you are only picking up one side of the story and you are overly narrating that story that's good that is absolutely fine so what when you do a review uh, when you write a re literature review for that matter also you are slightly more inclined from one theoretical perspective or one one perspective which you intend to write if you are a psychology guy you will try to put psychological terms in the process but a review paper does not have this so i'll give you examples to that in a, in some time and so on and so forth but what exactly the review it is like largely a critical constructive uh, analysis of literature which should which should def definitely have summary classification analysis and comparison all the four terms are important uh, a summary so you need to describe the entire elephant in this case okay and summarize that because you don't have uh, space and you don't have time also uh, to write everything about everything second thing is classification uh, in the same example uh, uh, there are if what you see right now on the screen on the right hand side uh, there are six people that means i have literally given six themes to my research so whenever i've done a review i should end up with some themes end up with some classifications these classifications could be based on on the way theory has evolved on the way the topic has evolved on the way authors have been contributing on the way uh, uh, a particular concept uh, did evolve and then it it finally got declined and so on and so forth what analysis are you putting in so what dr sapna mathur was asking me was uh, a bibliometric analysis so in section of analysis bibliometric analysis is one kind of analysis similarly you would have done a, a thematic review that is also one thing you could have written a citation co citation analysis that is also one way of analysis and so on and so forth. and obviously last but not the least is to compare when i say compare i i intend to talk about comparison in terms of of most critically acclaiming the researchers saying that while in 1970s uh, people were largely talking about telephones or sorry largely talking about uh, communication in the first place by 1990s and 2000 people came into uh, i mean researchers were discussing about telephones by 2005 2010 they were talking about mobile telephones and now in 2020 we're talking about smartphones so it has to be a comparison it could be over time it could be over concept it could be anything right that is very very important so while you are write your uh, review these four things summary classification analysis and comparison are very very important uh let's proceed to the other things uh, what are uh, how do i plan my review and what are the steps involved in that uh, a is to organize my literature b is to evaluate c is to identify patterns d is to synthesize and obviously finding research gaps and recommendations so a good review uh, is will be will definitely have an organized literature so when i say uh, when i say writing a good review paper it also means that so you might have read 200 papers and i will come to a Come to that in a minute. That how do you pick those papers and how do you shortlist those papers? But whatever papers you have you have read, uh, you have to. And this is a problem which uh, Dr. Mathur was mentioning in some time back that you may not be having access to all the papers. But if you do not have the access to all the papers, then writing a review will itself be a challenging task because the, the somebody who will review your review paper will come back to you and say that why did you not pick up these papers or why did you pick up these papers? Uh, that's very very important okay so that is something which uh, uh, which you need to refer to second thing is is to evaluate literature very clearly when i say evaluation uh, this is the toughest part of writing a review paper because what are what are you evaluating and how are you evaluating are the are important you may simply summarize the same you may not summarize the same uh, you may be putting some analysis behind it you may be putting some theory behind it that is absolutely up to you or up to the team who is designing the review the third thing is identifying patterns now uh, this is uh, a lot of software help you do this actually for example people rely on software like jeffy or uh, for that matter r also has a lot of way in which you can identify patterns or trends these are these patterns and trends are usually uh, found out based on two things a uh, how have the keywords evolved or how has the how has a particular thing evolved over time and second thing is 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 that uh, is is that a, is the concept uh, going horizontally or vertically over time let's say horizontally or vertically that means that think about a uh, think about an example of uh, human computer interaction 
Now, human computer interaction started way back when the machine started, right? When when the when the first machine came into picture. Since then, we are talking about human computer interaction. What what are we talking about today is something called artificial intelligence. Okay, which is largely applicable. Okay, but if you ask me, when did artificial intelligence started? It started with Alan Turing when he did uh, when he cracked the Enigma code. So while AI is available for over the years, what we are talking about right now is only application of AI. So is your review talking about AI in, or is your review talking about the application of AI? And that will decide you the pattern. Okay, and similarly the trends. So the trends in this case of application of AI would be that it could be applicable in healthcare, one trend. Application in marketing, the second trend. Application in finance, the third trend, and so on and so forth. Last but not the least, obviously synthesizing the literature and finding research gaps. For every theme you pick, you need to finalize uh, some research gaps. So based on, let's assume, 30 papers in one of the themes which you have picked, you have to then say, okay, uh, while researchers have talked about theme A1, A2, A3, A4, there is a potential of of answering these four or five research questions or research gaps. Now uh, people. This is again a uh, common feedback we have been receiving from the reviewers, from the editors, from the journals itself. They say that a lot of times these reviewers, sorry, the, the authors don't write research gaps in general. The reason being that people will pick up the research gap and they will do research on that. But that is the idea of writing a review in the first place. That's absolutely fine. It is open for people to pick your idea and then take it forward to the next level. That's absolutely fine. But I usually believe that uh, writing a research gap and uh, recommending new research areas is very, very important. Uh, and uh, a lot of people actually miss out on this part when they read a normal review paper also. Oh, sorry, normal uh, paper also. And I'll tell you and I'll, I'll support this with an example. When you usually read a research paper, the last thing what you read is the conclusion and future scope of research. And trust me, a lot of good ideas come from future scope of research. So while the introduction of the paper was interesting, uh, the methodology was very nice. The results are important. Everything is perfect. I spend, I myself and a lot of good people spend a lot of time reading, reading what is what's next, because my idea will probably be something which this guy has not done. Okay, and he himself has written that. He said he has written that this paper could have been analyzed. Better using an econometric modeling, or the data would have been collected over a longitudinal time frame, and so on and so forth. And I'll say that wow, that's good. You have already given me hints to write my next paper. Okay, so when I read a good A or A star paper, I always read the future scope of research, and that is that is why, uh, and in a way, that is what I am reviewing while I write my review paper also. Okay, so that's important. How and where to start? Uh, first thing is deciding between a mature versus an upcoming topic. And this is a very important debate, if you ask me. Uh, so people will always come back to me and say that, sir, I have, I want to write a paper on, um, on how have brands evolved over time. I want to write a paper on how has, uh, how is blockchain evolving over time. Now, branding as a concept and blockchain as a concept are are the same example of mature versus upcoming. Okay, I think for that matter, COVID nineteen for that matter. You know, COVID nineteen is something which is very very common right now. A lot of people are writing papers on. On COVID-19, but do you want to write a review paper on that? Uh, for if you ask me, the answer could be yes, and the answer could be largely no, because it is still an ongoing area uh, of research, and people are contributing, and you may not find as much good literature on that. Okay, so that's very very important. If you are planning to write a mature, uh, if you are planning to write a review on a mature topic, which is already, for example, green supply chain, or for that matter, artificial intelligence. Now, then you yourself would find 20 papers, 30 papers, 30 review papers for that matter, written in the same area. The question which the the editors will ask you that what is new in your paper, which somebody has not done. Again, so coming back to my first uh, presentation, you should have your X factor in in mind. It should clearly say that, uh, dear editor, while the earlier reviews have addressed uh, a thematic review, a bibliometric review, a uh, uh, scoping review, and dot dot dot. What we intend to do is we are trying to look at that how has this evolved over time, and we are trying to show something very new. So that is so showing something new in a mature topic is slightly difficult. But for an upcoming topic, it is equally difficult because you may not have so many papers. Okay, so your your research uh, of review or sorry, your review paper should slightly be falling in an area which is which is which has decently grown over time. Uh, it shouldn't be too much in the limelight. 
it shouldn't be uh, just starting to become a, a a player no it should be should be in the mid mid age career uh, of research and that is a very interesting point to begin with how uh, what and how it should be written uh, i will send this uh, in the next slide actually selecting the database is uh, very important and google is not not your answer in this case i basically mean that uh, that while everybody has free access to google scholar your initial starting point should be either a scopus database or a web of science database to begin with for people who are working in management of the humanities social sciences for that matter so what you should do is you should uh, definitely go to uh, uh, definitely go to uh, scopus website and search uh, for your keyword and uh, when i say search for a keyword and this is the toughest thing for all review papers and a lot of uh, editors and reviewers ask this question to the authors but how do you decide your uh, keyword now uh, there are two approaches to that and i will mention both the approaches to you a is start with the broad topic and then narrow it down so we call this as a funnel approach and we say that okay i want to do something in the area of green supply chain management so in using a double quotes i will write green supply chain management okay i want to say in double quotes i basically mean that i'm trying to search the entire string and not green supply chain and management as four different strings so i will type everything in one shot in double quotes uh, green supply chain management uh, because people might have also used uh, gscm which is a short form or the abbreviation of uh, green supply chain management i will also start start searching for uh, double quotes gscm in capital letters just to see that if somebody has used uh, these concepts in their uh, paper or not and while i'm searching as the scopus database i will only search for the the title the abstract the keyword and uh, largely to the name of the journal also if possible this will give me a good starting point to find if the paper has been published in the same theme or not now if you type green supply chain management you will end up probably having 3000 papers 4000 papers right now that's a good starting point but that's not the end of your research the second step what you should definitely do is uh is use your inclusion oblique exclusion criteria which is my fourth point on the picture which clearly says that uh, because you are trying to use an inclusion exclusion criteria this could be completely based on either journal or time or concepts or methodology theory authors quality of work and so on and so forth a lot of good reviews uh, review papers does the following thing they say that we are only reviewing papers who are published in abdc a category asr category and b category journal the reason being uh, They, that is a symbol of quality so we how do we understand quality we understand quality because of the indices if a journal is published i mean is uh, is i mean if a paper is published in a top index journal for me that would be a good uh, paper so therefore i will review that or i will only look at papers in the past 5 years or past 10 years or past 13 years or past 15 years how do i do that uh, scopus usually gives us this database uh, or this uh, 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 to show you a uh, a graph which says that how has this concept grown over time, and obviously if the graph if the concept has really picked up pace in the past five years, six years, eight years, that is a good time frame to talk about. Similarly, you can talk about concepts, methodology, theory, uh, set of authors, and so on and so forth. So that will give you the first exclusion, exclusion, inclusion or exclusion criteria, which will reduce the number of papers, uh, papers from three thousand to probably four hundred, or probably six hundred. now once you have picked up the 600 papers the second set of uh, exclusion inclusion criteria which people should definitely try and follow is to look at papers who are published only in journals and exclude i'm saying exclude the papers which are published in uh, in conferences or in books okay so book chapters i usually don't uh, i mean uh, journals usually don't review because that's a different style of writing okay and they are uh, they are not usually research research papers that largely conceptual papers or largely uh, book book kind of papers similarly conference papers are again not uh, considered very good why because then they are not really published by top uh, index index journals okay so they usually published by proceedings of uh, of any company and again proceedings are not uh, synonymous to to uh, to quality the third criteria or people tend to follow is uh, is looking at the number of citations it has it has attracted over the years so there could be a fantastic paper which was published uh, in a conference proceeding and it has really really attracted a lot of citations over the years that means that paper for whatever reasons has gained popularity okay 
So I might want to include that paper as well in my research. So uh, Scopus gives you a list of how many citations have you achieved over time. Uh, journals usually look forward to papers which are having a good uh, citation per year ratio. That means if the citation per year ratio is four, five, six, pretty good number. And 10 pretty, pretty or very, very good numbers. That means your, your paper has, has been cited by 10, 10 people in a year. Now that's a very good number to begin with. But if the citations are one, two per year, probably it's a weak paper to, to begin with. I mean, weak uh, review paper, for, uh, weak paper to be considered in your review as well. Okay. That is very, very important. So exclusion, inclusion criteria is largely dependent on, uh, on these kind of factors. Uh, people also, uh, put put uh, uh, conditional review uh, sorry conditional exclusions or inclusions based on the topic of research. For example, I'll give you an example. If I if you want to search for a uh, for a topic called artificial intelligence, now artificial intelligence can be a topic which is which is published by computer science literature also, and also published by uh, by journals in management as well as published journals in uh, in uh, in psychiatric also. So there are multiple uh, journals that are publishing AI based papers. What do you want to pick? Because you are doing a management oriented research. What I, I would request people to do is uh, just use uh, the ABDC list or the ABS list to compare whether a paper has been published in any of these journals or not. I'll show you a small demo also of that while as I proceed, uh, how do I do that? And so on and so forth. Once you have done with all of those things, you will be left out with a good 100 odd papers or 120 papers, 130 papers. Your next task is to really read each and every paper. Okay. If not each and every paper, at least the abstract to begin with. And I say I was mentioning abstracts are very important because that will help you to, uh, to actually write the entire paper in the long run. Because once the papers are ready, you have to maintain an Excel sheet. You should have different columns saying that, uh, and I will share that with Dr. Sapna. And probably she can send it to all the uh, participants also if possible. That sheet which I usually maintain uh, for writing a review paper, which says that okay, these are my uh, uh, these are the top authors in the paper. Uh, this is novel contribution. This is the methodology what they have used. How many data points did they collect? Where was the data collection done? What uh, theoretical approach did they follow? And so on and so forth. So I really maintain that Excel file. Uh, a lot of people instead of maintaining Excel file, use other sources like Zotero. Or for that matter, Mendeley and so on and so forth. Please feel free to use any software. Uh, Excel is the, the most free software I can think of, so therefore I use Excel. You can really pick any software of your choice and uh, obviously uh, uh, take down notes on your paper which you want to do. Uh, the second last point is very, very important, which is called self competence and avoiding biases. And this is the toughest part in writing a review paper. Uh, what, you, what you presume is right may not be right. Okay, so while I am reading a paper, I believe that the authors wanted to convey that X is impacting Y, but actually the authors wanted to say something else. Now, this is completely a debate between what you are doing and what uh, what is reality. And a lot of review papers are rejected because of this bias. So what I would suggest to suggest you to do is because you are maintaining an Excel file, because you are maintaining a database uh, wherever you want to maintain. Please share the database with somebody else, one of your co-authors, and let him or her validate their point. This validation is basically like internal validity and external validity. Same concept, right? Because we know that those are important. You have to test your validity for your uh, review papers as well. Okay? Because eventually the wrong trajectory can take you to moon rather than to Mars. That's very, very important. So a lot of we intend to uh, reject all review papers because whatever themes the authors have found out, we believe that those are not the actual themes. Something else could have been done. Okay, there is no scientific rigor to that. Okay, so that is very, very important uh, to begin with. When you begin your article, when you start writing your article, these are the four or five things. So your introduction section to your review paper will have these five points. A is motivation behind writing a review paper. Why does this topic need a review paper in the first place? Okay. Why was empirical papers not applicable? Why was case-based reasoning not so good? What is, why is this style of writing important for this? The second thing is what I mentioned earlier also is operationalizing the theme. It basically says that, uh, okay, uh, if I'm wanting to write a paper on artificial intelligence, 
what do i mean by artificial intelligence in my paper okay so define that there could be multiple definitions for people would have quoted try to summarize those definitions or only write the prominent definition published in top journals again and say that this is how my scope is the third thing is how will it contribute this review will contribute in the following fashion a knowledge development b uh, trend analysis c understanding what are the gaps and so on and so forth so there could be multiple contributions you have made discuss the contributions right in the introduction section okay the fourth thing is why is this paper so unique uh, there could be multiple reviews done on the same topic how is your review different from other reviews that is also very very important and last but not the least is defining the scope which is level of analysis temporal or contextual limitations scope of the review implicit values and so on and so forth which i have been mentioning and i have been talking about very clearly the inclusion exclusion criteria please mention that we are only reviewing papers in the past one year which are published in the area of management uh, which are only looking at the application of ai which are only talking about uh, which are paper published in abdc a category journals b category journals abs level journals and so on and so forth so definition of scope is very important else you will go haywire you will have no clue literally no clue where will you end up you will say that sir i have read to 200 papers i have no clue what to write and where to begin with so don't do that okay it's a time consuming task but that's okay that's absolutely fine so how do you structure your review and uh, i have picked up this uh, from a paper which i have mentioned in the references also which is by webster and watson 2002 it's a free paper i will send the paper if you want uh, and there are two approaches to write i mean said that yeah there are two approaches to write your review it could be either an author centric approach or a concept centric approach so concept centric approach and that is where i was mentioning that your themes could come from concepts or your themes could come from authors or the or the way authors have evolved over time okay that's that's very very important so if you look at table number 2 which i have copied uh, and i have maintained an excel file and this this uh, this paper also asks you to or request you to maintain an excel file where 1 2 3 4 are papers which you have read and a b c d are concepts for example paper number 1 talks about Uh, AI. It also talks about blockchain technologies. It also talks about something called application in the healthcare sector. The concepts are AI, blockchain, healthcare. I have made made crosses or tick marks. In paper number two, it talks about something called uh, virtual reality, artificial intelligence, and marketing, and so on and so forth. Now, once I have the entire grid ready as as table number two, uh, then I will start uh, start summarizing them based on concept. Concept number A. One thing. Concept number B. One thing. Concept number C. One thing. D. One thing. E. One thing. And I think everybody knows this very clearly that uh, that all these concepts should concepts should be mutually exclusive from each other. So please be very very clear while you define the concepts in the first place. Uh, if there is an overlap, write in the concept saying that this is an overlap of uh, B P or A plus S or Z plus Y or whatever. That was ab absolutely okay. That if the concepts are overlapping, but please mention that that there's there's an overlapping concept which people have talked about. Similarly, table number three, which says uh, concept matrix uh, argumented with unit of analysis, is clearly now so on the on the in the first column which you see is the number of papers and it says unit of analysis, which basically means that uh, there could be a relationship which people are discussing, which is let's assume that smoking causes cancer. Okay. Or job satisfaction is leading to uh, is leading to higher salaries, or leading to higher work commitment, and so on and so forth. So there is a unit of analysis which is which is work commitment. Okay, which has been mentioned. So now work commitment could have been mentioned in the case of a concept A, which is nursing. Okay, uh, which could be now nursing could be either organizational, it could be a group, it could be an individual. That means the data was collected from an organization. It was collected from a group of people, maybe using an FGD. Focus group discussion, or using individuals. For example, going to the hospitals and collecting data from nurses, right? So it could be an organizational-based data, it could be a group-based data, it could be individual-based data, or the same concept of of uh, work pressures or work commitment for nursing. So remember, your first paper talked about work uh, work commitments or work pressures. A represents nursing in this case, and O G I refers that whether the data was collected from organization. Uh, group or individual and then i will start summarizing them clearly so that is also one way of uh, putting your themes in place uh, i think that is also very very important uh, this comes to the next and a very interesting slide which is called the ingredients of writing an ideal review article what is 
I mean, obviously, nobody can write an agile review article, but obviously, this is the closest what you can reach is this. Is uh, I mentioned the motivation, I mentioned uh, uh, the key concepts, I've also mentioned the boundaries. Please, the fourth point is very, very important. Reviews related to prior literature in IS and related areas. I mean, IS is just an example in this case. Uh, please refer to papers which are published in your area, uh, which are review papers. That is very important to read. You cannot skip review papers in your review itself because that is like missing out the seminal paper, right? You cannot, in the same way, you cannot miss a pantry in a train, right? That's very, very important. That's, that's the blood of the train, right? How will people eat? So they have to rely on people, what people have done in the past. Uh, so as Google says, standing on the uh, shoulders of the giants, you have to include uh, prior literature papers, uh, prior literature review papers in your review paper as well. And then uh, the fifth point is, the most critical point, which is developing a model for future research. That means that an, an ideal review paper should end up with conceptualizing a model. Okay. Uh, I will show you our review paper, which I was recently reading uh, on crowdfunding. Uh, and they made a brilliant, uh, I mean, after once the presentation is over, I will show you that paper also. And that has been, they have done a brilliant job in doing this. They have literally done a brilliant job in, uh, in conceptualizing a paper, I mean, a model out of that. And then obviously justifying uh, the propositions by presenting a theoretical explanation to that, empirical findings to that, examples to that, and so on and so forth. When I say theoretical explanation, that largely means that how is the theory evolved over time or not? So for example, the, the, the topic of uh, job satisfaction, it all began with uh, intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. Good. Today, what we are talking about is analytics in that. So that means that we are trying to deviate from a theoretical perspective to a practical example. So while you're writing a review, you can say that what people were doing in, in, in early 1980s, 1990s, in 2000s, were a lot of, was, was, was largely theory, theory based research. What today people are doing is because there are a lot of good databases available, they're collecting secondary databases, and then they are trying to have larger analysis, larger complicated analysis. It is more practical in nature. So a review, therefore, is, is a journey from past to the future, and so on and so forth. And obviously the implications for researchers and managers, definitely. Uh, unlike the, an empirical paper or a case-based paper, review papers are largely read by a lot of people. And that is the reason it has, it will attract a lot of citations also. So remember that uh, if you are putting the right uh, pieces for the right people, then your papers are definitely cited. I remember uh, we wrote a paper in 2019, uh, which was published in Annals of Operation Research, an A category journal. Uh, it is it has just been a year, and I, we have got 38 citations, if I'm not wrong, uh, 39 citations in a year. And that's a good number to begin with, if I ask you, if you ask me. So that's a piece, that's a paper of my research uh, when I was doing my PhD, uh, and I would, this is also a suggestion which I would like to give to everybody that if you are if you are a young PhD scholar, spend the first year, spend and a half years in writing a good review paper because that will actually give you everything for your next. Two, three papers. It will give you the exact guidelines that this is what you want to do. These are the ten small themes in my uh, in my study, and uh, these are my gaps. And therefore, I want to research only in gap number one, gap number three, gap number three, and gap number eight, and ten, and so on and so forth. So that is very very critical for you and everybody for that matter. Anybody who is who is trying to get into an area uh, which they think is their uh, their bread and butter for the next. Six five, six years or whatever time, uh, definitely write a review paper in that area, whether it is marketing, whether it is finance, whether it is economics, IS, operations, human resource, whatever. Please do that. There are multiple types of review papers. Uh, and I've written systematic literature review on the top because uh, that is where the entire journey began. So the SLR, the systematic literature review is by far the best way to write a review paper. Whatever else has evolved has evolved after this. The meta analytical review, the narrative review, best evidence review, scoping review. Dr. Sapna was asking about bibliometric analysis. This is what it is. I'll talk about that also. Thematic review, theoretical review, conceptual review, state of art, historical, methodological. All these are governed by uh, by this uh, by this paper by, by this concept called systematic review of literature. And I will quickly uh, leave this. Uh, and I've mentioned some references also. Let me take you to a to a slide and. Uh, let me show you this. Hmm. 
megtörtént a hatás. So this is a uh, this is a very nice paper. I hope everybody is able to see this. Doctor Sapna, is it? Is it visible? Not yet. Not yet, sir. Not yet. Okay. Is this visible now? Yes, yes, it is visible. Okay, so I have uh, I've just typed this paper, and this is also mentioned in my uh, presentation, which is uh, it's a paper by Transfield et al. in two thousand and three. Uh, so David Transfield was had published this paper, which says towards a methodology for developing evidence informed management knowledge by means of systematic review. Uh, I will not read this paper out for you, but uh, I would request everybody to read this paper whenever you get time. I will send you this paper. I mean, it's freely available, although. And just type the paper's name, uh, and you will get the paper. Just, I've done the same thing. Just, just type the name of the paper, and it, you can just download the paper. It's freely available. There's nothing which can do in this. Okay, this paper actually. Uh, so this paper talks about uh, uh, an interesting concept, saying that how can you put scientific uh, process behind writing a management paper, uh, while science is largely uh, governed by experiments and in a lab scenario. Management research is not. We do not have management labs. We do not have uh, social sciences labs. What we have is a playground where people are involved and people are not. Uh, people are asking. People are irrationally depending on how are they behaving. So we do not know how are they behaving. But we are still trying to uh, put science behind uh, social sciences. So this paper talks about that. So it talks about evidence-based approach. How is how what, what why is that important? And uh, the evidence-based approach in medical sciences and healthcare, and then they slightly switch from uh, evidence-based research to a management orientation also. So this paper is uh, is very very important. So everybody, I would request you to read this paper for sure. And the other paper which I've also mentioned, uh, which is a paper by which I've also referred to in my study, is a paper by Webster and Watson, uh, which is this. So you can download this paper also. By which is called analyzing and is published in MIS Quarterly, which is again an FT50 journal, which I was mentioning in my uh, in my database. Uh, again, the topic says analyzing the past to prepare the future, writing a literature review. It's a very very old paper, but brilliantly written paper. I have picked up some of the data points from here in my presentation also, but that's that's very good, uh, very nice written paper. Please also remember that while you are referring to papers, you will find a lot of papers which are uh, Which have used uh, bibliometric analysis, or for that matter, meta-analysis, and so on and so forth. The crux of all those is this: okay. the underlying argument, what what this paper, uh, Webster and Watson have have pointed out, will not change in the overall uh, discussion. So please feel free to write a bibliometric analysis also. People end up writing a lot of bibliometric analysis also. I have no no issues with that. Uh, But I would request people uh, to refer to these papers and then do your analysis. Let me show you one more important thing. Uh, let me open another thing. Uh, okay. So while you are here, I would also want you to please download the ABDC list of journals, which I hope most of you are aware of. If you are not aware of, just search for ABDC list of journals. The recent list from 2019 has been updated. You can go to this. Go to our website of ABDC and start downloading the entire list. So just click on this list, this 2019 Australian Business Dean Council Journal list. Download this; it will show you an Excel file. And uh, if I download this, it will take me to an Excel file, which is, which is as follows. Let me open the Excel file and let me share the screen then. So I hope you are able to see my Excel file. Right? Yes. Sir. Now this is a file which has recently been updated by 20 in 2019. There are some modifications which I have made myself, but don't look at that. Uh, but if you can carefully look at this, every journal has been listed in the in the order of A, B, C, and A star. Right? If I just sort this on the basis of only looking at A star journals, 
uh, these are set of five journals, and there are only one ninety nine of those, only one ninety nine uh, journals which are listed in A star now. Now, uh, and this is completely uh, uh, irrespective of what area you are working, whether it is economics, whether it is marketing, whether it is social sciences, finance, HR. Your your reference paper should come from these largely, as I was mentioning. That's very very important. Okay. Uh, So again, out of this, there are a lot of journals which are a uh, which are AB ABS science journals also. For example, I mentioned some of these. For example, marketing science is an ABS four star journal, also an FT fifty journal in this case. Okay, so my reference should definitely try and be should be coming from this. And I was mentioning MIS quarterly. Uh, so MIS quarterly is also an ABS uh, four star journal, which uh, you should refer to in. If you are working in that, for example, look at this. The MIS Quarterly is a ABS four-star journal, and the paper which I was mentioning uh, is also published in MIS Quarterly. So while I appreciate that bibliometric analysis or meta-analysis are really catching up pace, but the maximum what they have reached is an ABS, sorry, an ABDC A or maximum A star. They are not hitting FT level journal. In FT, you will never find a bibliometric analysis or a meta-analysis being published. Rarely, meta-analysis is still being published. Uh, bibliometric analysis being published in an FT level journal. Rarely, very, very rare. But a review paper is definitely a conceptual paper is highly published in these kind of journals. So you should refer to this list for sure. A. Uh, the second thing what you should be referring to is a list by ABS, which I was mentioning earlier also. Just list, just search for ABS list of journals. Uh, and it will give you the entire list. Also, you can go to this uh, uh, Academy Journal Guidelines in 2018. Uh, this list is uh, published in 2018, in, uh, and it will be revised in 2021. So you can still rely on this list, and I will show you this list also in a minute. I have downloaded the list myself, so let me show you this list also. Uh, and whenever you are doing your review, uh, please read uh, both the lists. Uh, and then start deciding your journal. So let me share this screen also with you. So that's my ABS list. Uh, again, everybody can see that. So in 2018, these are my uh, four-star journals in the area of accounting. So if I keep on scrolling down, after accounting, what I will see is a new set of journals, which is business history and economic history. If I scroll down, I will have economy. Again, it starts from four-star journals, followed by four, followed by three, followed by two, and followed by one. Okay, and so on and so forth. After economy, there will probably be marketing and so on. Let me just quickly scroll down. Yeah, so there will be, ha. Huh, okay, so environmental studies, ethics, CSR, uh, management for that matter. A lot of journals related to that. Finance, a lot of journals related to finance, uh, and then HR and in and uh, and employee engagement, uh, international business for that matter, information management. So they have classified everything very very clearly. And uh, for example, in innovation, there is only one A star journal which is research policy. So, so because uh, that's how things, that's how innovation is being governed. So there is only one research, uh, one paper in if you're working in the area of innovation, which is a, a which is which is an A star journal or definitely an ABS four star journal. And then one four and a lot of threes and then two. So definitely you can definitely start reading AB. Uh, I mean ABDC. A star level journals, or in this case, a this four star journals. For example, marketing. Look at that. Journal of Consumer Research, Journal of Marketing, Journal of Marketing Research, Marketing Science, Journal of Retailing, European Journal of Marketing, so on and so forth. That's very very important. Uh, you should definitely look into these uh, lists also while you do your review. So when you download the paper, that's the next thing which I was coming to. When you, whenever you download any paper for that matter. So I'm not uh, uh, changing the fact that you should not uh, refer to papers. Whatever papers you are trying to refer to, please match those papers uh, with respect to one of these lists. So I'll show you a small example, which I let me see if I have that paper with me. Yeah. So uh, let me show you this screen also. Okay, so I have just downloaded some 89 papers or so from uh, from a Scopus database. Okay, on some keywords. Forget what the keyword was. That's not important for you right now. But how do I know that these uh, these papers are of the best category? Right. Uh, so let me put this in place. Go hide. Okay. So uh, that's the 
that's it. So once I've downloaded all these papers from my Scopus database, I do not know that, for example, I know myself that telematics and informatics are, is a C category. Uh, I may not want to read this paper in the first place. I may want to read the ASR paper first and then jump to my uh, A category papers or ASR category papers or whatever, right? And so on and so forth. What I will do is I will simply add a column here. So let me add a small column here. Okay. Uh, don't do that manual stuff. And I will say, okay, let me, I might want to write a, let me get rid of this column. Let me add a column here and, uh, and let me write a title to that. This is an ABDC list. I'll say, let me see that if the first journal is listed in ABDC or not. Remember, these 89 papers are downloaded only from Scopus database. Now, not every Scopus listed journal is ABDC listed journal. The vice versa is largely true, but uh, the first thing is not true. Okay, so not every Scopus listed journal is is ABDC listed or ABS listed. So what I will do is I will simply apply equal to VLOOKUP, which is a simple Excel command, and I'll try to find out this journal in a sorry in my ABDC list. So let me look at my ABDC list. Okay, uh, let me use the X, the entire thing. Okay, uh, the first one apparently is not an ABDC list, and I will simply scroll this down, uh, which will give me the entire thing. So what I've done is I've simply used a VLOOKUP command. I will not spend time in making me explain what VLOOKUP is. If time permits, by the end of the lecture, I will show you how to run a VLOOKUP also. But what I've basically done is I'm trying to find out that if this journal name is featuring in the ABDC list or not. And if yes, please correspondingly, please correspondingly mention the, the rank of it. So in this case, for example, I was mentioning telematics and informatics uh, is a C category journal, while European Economic Review is an ASR category journal. I'll be very happy to read this paper first. Similarly, technology for costing and social change is an A category journal. So once I've done my uh, sorting part, I will simply use my filters and I will only start uh, referring to only ASR journals first. And these are my set of ASR journals. Out of 89 papers, there are only six papers listed in ASR. And this is the rate of publication. See, 2015, one paper got published. 2017, two papers got published. 2018, one paper got published. And 2019, two papers got published. I only have six papers published in ASR. Uh, and this is uh, the paper which I'm, so the keyword in this case was donation based short funding. See, I only have six papers published in this case. Because Scopus also gives you the entire abstract. If I look at uh, column number R in this case, uh, abstract, I have the entire abstract of these six. The uh, papers. So what I will do is I will simply copy paste uh, control C, uh, maybe in a new file. Okay, control V, uh, maybe wrap this up for some time. Let me quickly wrap this. Okay, uh, wrap text. Okay, so I now can read the, the abstracts of these six papers and decide that are they lying in my area of research or not. And that's a good beginning point for, for doing any sort of a review. Okay, that's very, very important. Similar practice, whatever I've done for ASR, I will repeat the same practice for an, uh, for uh, my A category journals also. I'll go back here. Let's go on the left hand side. Instead of ASR, let me pick up an A category journals and I will see that I have around 14, 15 journals. Okay. Similarly, I can go for a B category journal and C category. But the good news or the bad news, whatever you want to say is, I would want to show you uh, any journal. And if you can see on the left hand side bottom corner, there are 49 journals out of 89, which were published in, in a Scopus listed journal, but alas, they are, they do not feature in my ABDC list. So should I include them? Should I not include them? Uh, the inclusion exclusion criteria could be again defined by you or could be scientifically defined. Uh, as I was mentioning, you can definitely refer to something called the citation. For example, look at the first paper. I mean, paper, which is this. This paper has got five, seven citations in less than a year. For me, this could be a good paper to begin with because this is some, this is slightly being more popular. Okay. On the contrary, if I further scroll down, uh, look at this, look at a paper which was published in 20, uh, 2015, hasn't got any citations till date. Now for me, this could be a really a bad paper, right? So even though the paper was, was not published in a, uh, in an ABDC listed journal, it has also not attracted citation in the long run. Similarly, look at this paper, uh, for that matter, which was published in 2018, hasn't got any citation till date. Should I include this? My answer to this is definitely not. 
Okay, A it is not indexed in the top ten. B it has not attracted any citation. I mean, not even one. So that is how I will start defining my inclusion and exclusion criteria, and then I will take it forward. So out of eighty nine, I will definitely not want to pick up most of these forty nine papers, but the remaining forty odd papers which are published in A, A star, B, and C should be taken into consideration. Similarly, like ABDC, I will also create one more column. I'm not doing it right now. I will create one more column which will help me find out the equivalence of ABS in this. Again, I will run the the same uh, view lookup and find out which all journals are published in ABS listed journals. Also, there will be a lot of overlap between ABDC and and ABS, but that's a good sign for you. Okay. So uh, by and large, this is what I wanted to talk about uh, as far as the review process is concerned. uh we are almost up on time uh, let me pick up some questions uh, from the audience and then uh, we'll take it forward forward from there yes sir uh, definitely indeed it was very informative session and with live presentation so that our participants they are able to have an hands on experience while they are fetching any uh, research paper and then they are uh, uh tracking it whether they should include it they should exclude it whether those are listed or not so like it's a very practical representation which uh, now now uh, the upcoming researchers or who are planning to do research in their areas they can even go for it so thanks a lot and uh, the question is uh, it says how do we exhibit our creativity and originality in writing a review paper Okay, uh, that's a very nice question. In fact, uh, so uh, creativity and novelty are uh, are largely driven by what are you again same example which I was mentioning. It has not been published till date. So again, everything is fine, but because of COVID nineteen, people are staying at home. Because people are staying at home, there's less pollution. Different style of the story to be written. Now that's that's uniqueness of the study. While everybody is saying COVID is bad, I am saying COVID is good for the environment. Now that's something which is a new contribution of the study. Fair enough. People are saying that uh, COVID nineteen has helped you uh, help people to stop socializing. Again, negative attribute of the story. I will say that it has brought people closer to their family. Uh, this is something which which is completely your own choice of how are you looking the world at. As Amir Khan says that you can also, I mean, in his movie, he says that you can completely uh, watch a tree as a tree, or you can watch a tree as somebody standing with a with a blanket on him. that is completely your choice uh, your choice of what we want to pick and how we want to pick okay sir the next uh, question is from dr siddiqui and the question says do review papers need ethical approval uh because you are not collecting primary data uh, it's you most of the universities do not uh, allow you to have any ethical approvals because ethical approvals are usually governed are usually taken care when you have subject Uh, or in your case, subject means people involved in the process. Because you are not involving people in the process, ethical approvals are usually not given. I mean, not taken from the university in the first place. Okay. And the next question is: uh, Do we have any minimum or maximum criteria regarding number of research papers to review on a particular domain or topic in order to write a review paper? There is no. There is. Uh, there is no minimum or maximum papers. the only challenge which uh, which you will face as a as an author from the reviewer or the editor that they will ask you the scientific process very carefully and they will they, they themselves will run the process so for example you have said that i used xyz keyword uh, on this website they will ask you that okay can you show me the steps uh, clearly if you have used if i have written a code for that give me the code i will run it myself and check that did you actually get 280 papers for an example or did you actually get 14 papers for example and so on and so forth so that is very very important uh, again there is no minimum criteria also uh, for that but uh, your number should ideally be not less than 50 this is again an unsaid rule uh, with less than 50 you are basically saying that you are doing a research on a very very niche area for example i want to understand the concept of ai in nursing in the hospital industry in india you will only probably have 50 papers now that's not a good review in the first place okay so people they might be, the editors might come back to you and say that increase the scope of research so that so be prepared for that that is the reason why people fail in uh, review papers right 
um, the next question it says any tips for identifying the research gaps apart from what you have told like uh, whenever we read paper we have future scope of uh, application so from there we can pick out the research gaps or the future course of action but any other tip uh, where we can find out the research gaps uh, obviously uh so I mean, I'm not saying this is a tough question, but I will say it is all about picking up the right opportunity. A lot of gaps are also being listed by, 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 uh, by people who are doing special issues actually. So uh, also keep a note of so irrespective of whether you target a special issue or not. If there's special issue in, in, uh, in any journal, in any top journal, the editor or the guest editor himself has found out themes which has not been researched in the past. For example, I'm, my, I myself am doing special issues with seven journals right now. What we have been working is, what we have listed is the potential things which people have not researched on or has not researched that much uh, in the past. So that's a good beginning point for anybody to think about. Again saying, that does not mean that people should submit papers for special issues only because that at times create a pressure because it's a time bound thing. But that's a good beginning point. You can always start uh, developing, a developing a paper on that thing and submitting to that journal or any other journal. Uh, the last question uh, which I have found in the chat box, it says, is meta-analysis similar to the review paper or you want to throw some light on this? Okay, so meta-analysis is uh, slightly different from, uh, is obviously one category of a review paper, uh, but meta-analysis is slightly more uh, technical nature because now what you're trying to do is you're trying to address uh, the relationship between the variables X and Y, which has been done over the past few years or past couple of years. So for example, uh, if X is job satisfaction and if Y is, uh, uh, is intentions to quit and people have in a way proved or disproved in whatever way that if you have a higher job satisfaction, then there's a lesser chance of you to, to quit the organization. Then you use this, uh, use this hypothesis and you start looking at what was the degree of relationship over the years uh, by different researchers to measure this same relationship. So maybe uh, the number of uh, papers what you are reading will only be restricted to, to to papers which are only talking about this relationship itself. So that's a slightly more technical version of a review paper. But yeah, absolutely acceptable with uh, acceptable in common. Okay, sir. I hope all the queries are taken off. And um, I would also like to thank you for such an informative session and uh, one more important thing that is uh, your acceptance for delivering your keynote or your inputs for our session in such a short span of time. So I would like to thank you for that also. And indeed, if I talk about myself, I have also learned a number of new inputs and a, a comprehensive way of arranging all those things in a sequential manner so that it is easy for me. Means as a researcher, it is easy for us to understand the uh, key points and the key areas and the things which we can definitely include and exclude and where we can focus and and, and number of things it's up to us how we can make it more um, like we can make it more broad and we can make it more comprehensive it's up to us so even i have learned so for that also it's um, a heartily thanks from my side for uh, sharing your inputs and all those things and apart from collaboration, I would also hope that you will help us out, for, especially for uh, fetching the research papers, which is, as I had already told, is the limitation from our side, especially people who are in tier two cities or not from pre premier institutes, fetching the research papers from pronounced databases is a big problem. So I think that will definitely help us. Thank you, Dr. Mathur. I mean, I will be happy to help in whatever is possible. Feel free to reach out to me over on LinkedIn or a, or a message. I mean, whatever is convenient. Uh, I usually reply to all my emails in less than a day. Uh, so feel free to write out, reach out to me uh, in whatever way possible. Even though you want a research paper, I can. I will be happy to download and send it to you. It will not not take me more time to do that. I mean, it's Thanks absolutely a lot. free for us. Thanks a lot. So uh, now I would like to request Dr. Yogin Singh, sir, to kindly formally propose his vote of thanks to our speaker and share his inputs and insights uh, for the day two, which was specially on writing papers, how to write papers, especially for top reputed journals, and how to go for uh, 
the review papers, the practical insights. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Sapna Madam, co-convener, IALP. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, extend my sincere thanks to Dr. Abhishek Vahelji for uh, his uh, uh, outstanding uh, session because it was really very, very, very informative where uh, uh, he has shown us n number of ways to go for because this is a need of the time as faculty members this is a need of the time we all uh, need to uh, write papers this is the professional requirement this is the uh, administrative requirement of, of our profession also for our increments and everything it plays a very important role and as faculty also we have to do the research and when we do research we uh, generally uh, we actually require that it should be recognized and that is uh, for that we need to go for writing the papers or review of uh, papers. So it is really a need for all of us and uh, it is always a learning, learning of new di dimensions, new transformations, how to go in the best possible manner, how to make it easy uh, so that uh, our uh, whatever efforts we are putting in are reaching to the right place at, at the right time because there are n number of people who struggles that uh, first of all, how to write the paper, then where to send the paper, uh, how to go for the review of the papers. So it is uh, for some, it is not a, uh, it is not difficult, but uh, for maximum, because uh, it, it depends upon the level of uh, journals you are looking for. So if, uh, so if uh, suppose for a journal A, it, it may be easy for me to send my paper in journal A, but I may be looking for a uh, very A++ category journal. So I may be facing problems. So sir, you have really enlightened us through your uh, uh, knowledge and uh, the way you have shown really helped us, including me. And definitely, sir, thank you. Thank you very much. We'll keep on bothering you. And uh, thank you very much for extending, for accepting our uh, uh, invitation at a very short notice and extending your cooperation for future cooperation also, sir. And definitely, we'll keep on bothering you a number of times. So I, once again, uh, thank you very much, sir, for your support and cooperation and giving your valuable time and enlightening us. I, uh, before I put a full stop, I also, uh, I like to thank Dr. Sapna Mathur, Madam, co-convener of IALP for uh, uh, designing such a wonderful program and uh, designing such, uh, and uh, keeping such wonderful topics, which are really the need of the day. So thank you very much, um, uh, Dr. Sapna Mathur Mayam, for uh, arranging such uh, wonderful topics and uh, uh, doing a wonderful coordination. I would also like to thank my faculty coordinators, uh, Professor Rakesh Bhatt, Dr. Anchal Singhal, Madam, Professor Ankur Garg. I also like to uh, thank the uh, uh, organizer, organizing committee members, Dr. Vednath Ram Prajapati ji, Dr. Anju Tripathi, Madam, Dr. Patriva Giri, Madam, and Professor Sada Safety. And I would also like to thank all, sir, CEO, sir, AO, sir, Dean Academics, and each and everyone. And at the last, I would like to thank the most, 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 I always say that they are the most, most, most important stakeholders, the honorable participants, because they are the one who actually makes the program successful. So I once again, from the depth of my heart, I thank all the participants, honorable participants who have joined us from various parts of the globe. So I thank you all. Thank you very much. And thank you once again to the entire team. Thank you, Madam. Over to Dr. Sabna, Madam, for finally closing the program and announcing, and the, the timings will remain the same for tomorrow also. Uh, that is, uh, again, the tomorrow the session will start sharp at 10 a.m. So similarly, Madam will let you know to join uh, before uh, 30 minutes to avoid any technical glitches. So once again, thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Bye. Dr. Singh. Thanks a lot, sir. And I would also thank Abhishek, sir. And for the participants, we'll meet uh, sharp at 10 o'clock. The session will start 10 a.m. 
uh, tomorrow day 3 and uh, we'll have dr rohit sharma from niti mumbai and he'll be speaking on uh, Uh, like a uh, literature review and citing references he'll be talking on that particular theme which is also as important as we have our uh, theme for today's session so kindly join on time uh, to avoid any sort of technical glitches and uh, to have our session thoroughly so uh, that's all for the day 2 and we'll meet sharp at 10 o'clock day 3 for the international academy of leadership program Thanks, Thank you, Dr. Mahathir, uh, for your invitation. Thanks. It was really a nice experience uh, to deal with everybody. And uh, in case please, everybody is, uh, uh, we are all at uh, uh, learning from each other. But I always believe that uh, competition, while I mean everybody is trying to compete in research, it's, it's good that competition. There's a spirit of competition, but in the process, you should not uh, miss out on a very int interesting and important uh, uh, thing called collaboration. So collaboration is important. Everybody should collaborate in whatever way possible. And not everybody should be included in your research paper, as I was mentioning. Yes. Feel free to write to me, uh, write to Dr. Mathur. I mean, everybody is here for your uh, benefit, and we will try our best to help you in whatever way possible. Okay? Yes. Thanks a lot once again, Dr. Mathur and JSS. Thanks a lot, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. And accepting our proposal in such a short time and delivering it in such a wonderful way, I would like to like. I have no words to actually explain. So thanks a lot. Thank you. And I would also request participants to join sharp at 9:30 a.m. Uh, so that we do not face any sort of technical issues while joining Zoom. So please join at 9:30, and the session will start at 10 a.m. sharp. Usually speakers do join at 9:45, so it's my request to join the session tomorrow onwards at 9:30 a.m. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye bye.